Today I am going to show you how to make one of these, a beautiful paper rose using a few pages from an old book and some florist wire. These pretty book roses are very simple to make and once you have made one you can make as many as you like and even create your own bouquet like this to display. So thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy this free workshop. To make your paper rose you will need an old book, sellotape, glue stick, scissors, a pencil, some florist wire and your template. You can make your own or you can download the free template that goes along with this video. Okay, so let's get started. Tear out a few book pages. You're going to need at least three pages for one flower. Stack them on top of each other. Now place your template on top and draw around it with your pencil. You may want to go around twice so you have a well-defined line. Holding your pages together, cut around your shape. Now I have more than three sheets here, but you will only need three petal forms for one rose. Taking each rose form, we're going to fold the forms in half along the dips between the petals, making sure you make a good crease. And we're going to work our way around the rose form. You can also fold the form in half and fold it into a teardrop shape, whichever way you prefer, as long as each petal shape is defined by a crease. The next step is to shape each layer of our rose. Taking one of your three forms, cut out one petal shape. Now put that to the side. Take your next form and cut two petals from it. It should look like a little heart. So now we have our five layers for our rose and we can start building it. Taking the form with one petal cut out, we're going to make a cone by overlapping the edges where you cut out the petal shape. Looking down on the form, you should see four petals. Secure this with sticky tape. You can be quite generous with the sticky tape as you won't see it when the rose is finished. Now take the form with two petals cut out and form a cone. This will have three petals when you look down on it. Taking your heart shape, we're going to make a cone from it, but since this is quite fiddly, we're going to curl it around your pencil. Align the shape with the point running along the length of the pencil and gently wrap it around. Holding the paper, give the pencil a couple of good twists. Remove the pencil and curl the edges of your cone together and stick with sticky tape. You can overlap a little, but the more you overlap, the tighter your cone will be and you need to have enough room to fit in your central petal. Again, be generous with the sticky tape. Using the pencil again, gently curl your single petal, lining the point of the petal along the pencil. Give the pencil a couple of good twists. Now we're going to attach the inner petal to the stem. Taking your florist's wire, I've cut this one to about 20 centimetres long, we're going to use the pencil again to create a small loop at the top. This will stop the wire pulling through your flower.
at the tip of your smallest petal, dab on a generous bit of glue. You can use a hot glue gun for this if you have one, but a stick of glue works just as well. Just don't use PVA as it's too wet. Press the looped end of your wire into the glue and gently wrap the petal around it. This is a bit tricky, but keep squeezing and twisting the paper until it sits the way you want it to. You can secure the sides of the petal closed with some tape if you like. Now put this to one side. To make your rose a little more lifelike, we're going to curl the petals using the pencil. The small cone is quite tricky, so you may need to work at it a little. It doesn't have to be perfect, so don't worry if the paper doesn't curl as much as you would like. Now do the same with each of the other forms. Put a good covering of glue on the base of your petal on the wire and slide your smallest cone up the wire to meet the petal giving a good squeeze at the base. Cover the base of that petal with glue and slide your three petal cone up the wire to meet it. Squeeze at the base of the cone so that it sticks. Repeat this for the next cone. For your last petal form, put a generous dab of glue in the centre of the form. Gently push the wire through the centre of the paper and slide it up to your flower. Squeeze the form so it sticks to the flower and adjust the petals until you are happy with it. At this stage, you can make the curl of your petals more defined if you wish. And that is how you make a simple rose from the pages of a book. Um, today we have a warm up first, okay. Uh, Mark's going to get us moving with the, with the uh, tennis balls, okay, get our hands moving. After that, we're going to do the pull shot, okay, which is a, a fun shot, one that we have loads of boundaries with. And um, we're going to do some wicket keeping today. So I'm just going to hand over to Mark for a warm up. Okay, so for this, you'll need two balls, okay, so ball in your right hand, ball in your left hand. This is just to work on our catching, focusing eyes on the ball. As soon as you feel the ball in your hand, grip it nice and tight. So we're going to go right hand catch, then left hand catch. Okay, start off. Just a small throw into the little rhythm, then we can go a little bit higher. Okay, so we're going to challenge yourself now. Can we throw both balls at the same time and catch right hand, left hand? And again. Okay, so now we're going to try and cross the ball. So throw with the right, catch with the left. And at the same time, we'll throw to the left and catch with the right. Okay, we'll use the ground. 
right hand, left hand. Okay, at the same time. Okay, if you have a flat wall at home, again we can use two balls at the same time, right hand catch, left hand catch. Okay, at the same time. Okay, so as you can see, those are very difficult. Excellent for your hand-eye coordination skills, so give those challenges a try. Well, in today, I'm going to play the pull shot, okay? Um, really good shot, usually played against a short ball or a full toss, but one which doesn't bounce. We're trying to hit it hard and score if we can. Four runs, six runs. Okay, so Mark, we're going to have a go at it. I'm going to drop the ball to you. Now Mark's standing, okay, so um, if the bowler's coming from here, okay, his legs is there, he's going to play the ball across the leg side. Right, Mark, just going to drop the ball, let me see if you can hit the ball across to that side. So all I want you to do, okay, you're just going to get somebody to drop the ball to you, have a go at hitting on the leg side of your pull shot, okay, have uh, 20 shots and see how many you can get. Set yourself up a little target, okay, and see if you can get ball, the balls through the target. Once you've done that, okay, Mark, if you just run through some of the coaching points, so remember, if the bowler is bowling the ball from here, okay, Mark stands sideways on, okay, in a stance, okay, as the ball bounces, he starts to open himself up, Reaches out with the bat, okay, so he comes out the about uh, arm's length there, hits the ball, you can hit it flat, if he's going to hit it forward, okay, if he wants to hit it up in the air, the bat face can go a wee bit there, okay, and he's hitting it hard, and his head, he's always concentrating on here, okay, making contact with the ball there, okay. A common mistake sometimes people make is they start to look to see where the balls went and forget about the ball here, so it's important to keep your eyes on the ball and make contact there. Okay, right, Mark, this time what I'm going to do is you just take one little step back, okay, I'm just going to bounce the ball down, okay, as up to the match, okay, so the bowler's bowled the ball, he's bowled it a little bit short, I think, right, I'm going to score some runs off with my pull shot, so let's see how you do. Beautiful, four runs all the way, okay, again, nice one, get that down, right, again, Mark. Shot. Six rolls all the way, okay. Right, this time, that was off a short ball. Now, sometimes a bowler will bowl a full toss, and a full toss in cricket's a ball that doesn't bounce, okay? So it goes from the bowler's hand, goes straight down, okay, and the batter makes contact there. So, this time, Mark, I'm just going to be a little underarm feet, and you're going to play your pull shot again, okay, off a full toss. The shot, okay, again. Perfect. One more, okay, eyes of the ball, next six to finish off. Today's bowling skill, we're going to bowl off spin, okay, so in cricket we have a couple of types of spin, we have off spin and we have leg spin, okay, so with off spin, okay, what you do is you use first two fingers, okay, the, we have our seam, okay, and we have our forefinger and the second finger there are just wrapped around the ball, your thumb just rests underneath the seam, okay, so we have a nice comfortable position there uh, with the seam there, so the way we're going to try and bowl our off spin, okay, is with the ball in our hand, we're twisting, so if you're twisting, it's like a doorknob, if you're twisting the doorknob, and that's the action for the off spinner, okay, so two fingers on the seam, okay, third finger resting on, thumb underneath, okay, and this time, okay, just to practice this one, what we do, I'm going to go down on one knee. Okay, now for this, I'm just going to bend my arm just to get into the, the action of an off spinner. You can see the position of my wrist. Okay, so I'm just going to start bowling the ball, okay, or throwing the ball. And as I uh, throw the ball, I'm going to turn my wrist, okay, as if I'm twisting a doorknob, and that starts to get the seam to rotate, okay, and that's what will make the ball spin when it hits the ground. Okay, so let's see. Again. So if you see when I'm releasing the ball, the forefinger is the one that's really doing all the work, okay? It's the one that's pushing, okay, against the seam to get the seam to rotate. 
Okay, we rest in that position. So if you get somebody lined up, a little challenge for you, okay, is to see if you can spin the ball so when it hits the ground, it's going to start to move, okay? So what I want you to do, okay, if you can just watch the seam again. Okay, so I'm still down in this position, okay? Still here with the seam. I'm going to just release it and you'll start to see the, the seam rotate. Okay, so the seam's rotating and the ball's turning. Okay, so what we're going to do now, okay, we're going to have a go at bowling some off spin. So I'm going to ask Mark, Mark, I want you to have a go at bowling. Now remember, when you're bowling the ball, this time your arm must be straight. Okay, so when you go to release the ball, okay, your wrist stays the same position with the off spin. Your arm's straight here, okay, but it's that finger that's going to really push and start to work the ball, okay, to make it turn. Alright, so when we're turning in an off spin, okay, Gerald, can you just point around towards the stumps? Okay, so we have our stumps here. Guys, an off spinner, if they're bowling the ball, okay, when the ball comes down, an off spinner, when the ball bounces, okay, it bounces and it goes in towards the stumps here, okay, so it bounces, it hits the seam, rotates and goes in. Alright, so it's always moving in towards the batter, okay, if it's a right handed batter and you're standing here, the ball will be bouncing out here and turning back in towards him. Okay, Mark, do you want to have a wee go? Do you have a bowl here? Okay, so Mark's going to do some bowling. Okay, we're just going to flip the camera around. All right, so we're going to see Mark in his bowling action. And Mark, we're going to see if you can bowl the ball. And this they try to get an off spinner, okay? And see if you can get your ball anywhere in this area here. And see if you can maybe get the ball to spin in through there. Okay, that's your little challenge. Okay, again, just on the wrist, good wrist position. Yeah, perfect, lovely, well, balls good through the gate there. Okay, again. Fantastic. Okay, Mark, just get the ball for a second. Okay, and um, we'll put a trigger ball in your hand. And when you just stop, when you get to the top, you just show us the position of your wrist there. Okay, so you're there, up, and roll there. Perfect wrist position. Four finger there on the seam, and turning the ball. Okay, all right. Beautiful. Okay, alright, so that's off spin bowling, John. Can you just throw us a cricket ball a wee second there? So remember, just a couple of key things about bowling off spin. Okay, um, fingers apart on the seam, thumb underneath, third finger rest in there, okay. Uh, cock your wrist there. Alright, so that's the position all the time. And um, so if you're turning the doorknob, that's the action when you're releasing the ball. Alright, so have a wee go at that. Remember to start off um, when you're down on your knee, okay, just at a, at a throwing position, okay, to get used to the, the, the off spin action. Okay, when you get more confident, then go back into your bowling action. Alright, and into that position there, alright, where we can release the ball and see if we can get the, the ball to rotate, okay. Just a good way to uh, off spinners do all the time to get the ball in through their hands and get used to spinning the ball. They just twist the ball, okay, so you're just twisting all the time with your forefinger. And you can see, you can start to see how the seam really rotates, okay? So that gets the revs on the ball. When the seam hits the ground, it spins and starts to move in different directions, okay? So have we go at the off spinning and hopefully you enjoy that. Failing today, okay, so we're work on some wicket keeping. The wicket keeper is such an important job in cricket, okay? Um, he's always in the game, okay, when the bowler bowls the ball, comes through to the wicket keeper, they have to have good hands and uh, fast feet. Uh, when the ball goes out on the outfit, okay, the wicket keeper is always up to the stumps to collect the ball. But what we'll do first, okay, we're just going to do some uh, basic wicket keeping drills, okay? So Mark is our keeper, okay, and what I'm going to do, Mark, I'm going to feed you the ball, okay? Uh, I want you just to move from side to side, just show us the position of your hands. So good wicket keeper, uh, hands working together, little fingers together, knees bent, and feet about shoulder width apart, okay? So we start off with Mark, okay? Receiving the ball, watch that with your hand. Okay, again. Good. Okay, right. This time, Mark, I'm going to start moving you from side to side. So let's see how you move. Cross, under position well there. Over your right hand side, lovely. Okay, again. Left hand side. If you just notice with Mark, okay, he's always presenting his hands, okay? So the hands are always out ready for the ball, okay? Mark, this time I'm not going to tell you where the ball's going to go, you're going to have to start working across. 
Good, again. Yeah. Good. Over here. Right, so if you're doing that at home, if you have somebody to throw the ball to you for your wicket keeping, have a little go of those exercises, okay? Present your hands, bend the knees, okay, and just move inside side to side, okay? Um, if you're by yourself and you're at home with a tennis ball, okay, Mark, just want to show us against the wall, just the exercise you do to practice your keeping. So you're just moving across, side to side. Yeah, so just against the wall, very, very simple. Okay, this time. Mark, do I bring the stones in? So this becomes a bit more realistic. Um, Mark's in behind the stones. So this time, Mark, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the ball, it's going to come down, and you're going to have to move across if you're in a game and take the ball. Okay? So you're ready? Okay, in a good position. Okay, so we're starting up for here, okay? And moves across, and it's a good pick. Okay, again, over to your right hand side. Lovely. Right hand side again. Yeah. Right, let's test you north side. Over. Good. Over. Over. Good. Okay, so just on your movement, set up target, okay, and you're moving from side to side just to receive the ball. Right, Mark, what do you do now? Okay, it's this time, so you've your position. Usually, for a wicket keeper, the position that we take up is your left foot is level with this stump. And this time, Mark, I want you to start off, before I let go of the ball, you're going to start off in this position, down and bend your knees and hands just touching the ground. As the ball bounces, I want you to come up with the ball. Okay? Right, so we're in a nice low position, good, head's in a good position. Okay, ball bounces, comes up with the ball. Up with the ball, lovely. Good, right, let's try the other side, Mark. Moves across. Excellent. Across again. Good. One more. Right over. Well done. Fantastic. Okay, so you see the difference now that Mark's starting to come up with the ball. Okay. Uh, head in good position. Uh, feet just about shoulder width apart. Okay, so try those feet on both sides. Okay. Try about 20 feet and see how many you can do. Right, just to move it on and make it a little more, more game realistic. Okay. If you have somebody else at home that can help out. I'm going to bring in John. John's going to come up. And John's my batsman now. So now this is what happens in cricket. Okay, so it's very simple. They think, right, I'm just going to stop the ball. But now you have somebody in front of the wicketkeeper's eye line. He's going to bat in his hand. The bat's going to be uh, swinging about. So when the ball comes down, the wicketkeeper's got to concentrate because the ball can come down. It can hit the edge of the bat. Mark can take the catch to the wicketkeeper. Okay, uh, the ball can come down. Sometimes it might go down past the batsman's legs here, and the wicketkeeper has to be across on that side, okay? Or sometimes, and this is a really tricky one, the ball can come down and it goes between the batsman's feet there, and it can down, and the wicketkeeper must judge it there. So I'm going to test Mark here. I'm going to throw a few balls down. John's going to be our batsman, okay? Uh, Mark, let's see how you do with these catches, okay? Right, so now Mark's got a bit of distraction because we've got a batsman starting to swing here. Yeah, a wide one there. Right, Mark, we test you a couple maybe down the leg side. Now these are the real testers because the batsman's body's in the way there, okay? So it's down the leg side. Wicket keeper gets round there. Down the leg side again. Excellent. Okay. Maybe a bit closer to the batsman. You get one that's a full toss and that can go straight through. That can catch you be surprised, okay? And the odd time, okay, you can get one by a shorter one. And this one for the wicket keeper has to be really short, okay? Because the ball's going to bounce just a little bit higher, okay? So, bounces a wee bit higher again. And that's a great tip. Okay, so that just makes it a bit more, that makes it a bit more realistic when you put the batsman in there and the wicket keeper's working from side to side. Okay, just another little exercise. Mark, if you get the two cones there, just bring them in. And this time, just put one side, Mark, so we got right, so this time, I'm going to put the ball out, it's going to be go a bit wider. What the keeper, what Mark going to have to do, Mark, can you just go out a second? Because Mark has to collect the ball out wide, and Mark, I want you to bring it in and try and get a stop on okay? So if a batsman steps out of his ground in cricket, John, do you want to come your bat again? 
and it's John's valley, and John decides, right, he's going to step out of his crease, and he walks out there, and there's a line here. If John walks out of his crease, and the wicket keeper receives the ball, and hits the stumps before John gets his foot back, it's called a stumping, and the batsman will be out, so it's a really important skill in cricket, okay? All right, just watch again. Okay, if you come down the leg side, John, step out for me to hit. John's missed the ball, and receives it, and I've hit the stumps. Right, thanks, John. All right, Mark. So this time, Mark, we're going to work on a few stumpings. Okay, we're ready, we're going to go out to the red first. Out wide, take it across, lovely. Red again. Out, round, good. Right, we're going to leg side this time. These are the tricky ones, okay? Right, go across. Good. Across again. Good. Right. So now we're testing for the stumpings, okay? So Mark's working side to side, trying to get those stumpings, okay? Mark, what I want you to do this time is when you're going to take the stumping, I want you to go out, I want you to take the ball wide and see if you can transfer the ball in the one hand and knock the bales off, okay? So, he's in a good position here, nice and steady across, something, good, lovely. Takes the ball right across, red again. Over, transfer hands, good. You go onto the leg side now, okay. Over, you switch your hands, lovely. Nice work, over again, good. Right, I'm not telling you what side you're going to go. I'm going to put it a little bit faster at you. All right, so you've got to go on your toes here. Okay, here we go. Good work. Again, leg side. Lovely. Off side. Good hands. Feet moving. Good. Last one. Here's a big one. Nice work. Okay. All right, guys. Just a little bit of wicket keeping. It's a great skill. It's, you like to be really involved in a game. A wicket keeper is a fantastic position to have in cricket. You're always active. When the bowler's bowling, you're in the game all the time. If it's a fast bowler, you have to be really athletic. If it's a spin bowler, you're up close to the stumps that Mark was doing there, just moving from side to side to take the stumpings. And as well, when the ball goes out in the outfield, you always have to be ready because somebody will throw the ball up to, to you for a chance of a run out. Okay, well done everybody. Day three, the Summerstein quiz. Round number one, general knowledge. Question one, what is the name given to an animal that only eats plants? Number two, in which year did the Second World War end? Number three, what is Doctor Who's time machine called? Number four, what is the name of the organ that pumps blood around the body? Number five, what two colours make up the flag of Spain? Number six, how many hours are there in two days? Question seven, in the Jungle Book, what kind of animal is blue? Number eight, what is the name of the tree that produces conkers? Number nine, what kind of food is pawpaw? And number ten, what is a baby goat called? Okay, right. okay, round number two, this is the music round. Number one, who sings Shotgun? Number two, John, Paul, George and Ringo were members of which band? Number three, what's the missing word in this song line? I love it when you call me, I wish I could pretend I didn't need you. Number four, what was Elsa's song called in the first Frozen film? 
Number five, Niall Horan, Liam, Liam Payne, Harry Styles, and Louis Tomlinson were members of which group? Number six, what are Justin Bieber fans called? Number seven, who sang Shake It Off? Number eight, how many different words are there in the Baby Shark song? Number nine, what animal is in the title of the 2019 Tones and I song with the lyrics, dance for me, dance for me, dance for me, oh, oh, oh. Number 10, what song is sung more than any other in the world? Okay, round number three, this is a potluck round. Number one, what is the highest mountain in Great Britain? Number two, what is the capital of New Zealand? Number three, which fairy tale character slept for 100 years? Number four, the Great Barrier Reef is located in which country? Number five, in the nursery rhyme, who kissed the girls and made them cry? Number six, what sort of animal is the video game character Sonic? Number seven, in which forest do Robin Hood and his merry men live? Number eight, Helsinki is the capital city of which country? Number nine, how many pockets does the snooker table have? And number 10, on which continent is India located? So answers to round number one, general knowledge. Number one, herbivore. Number two, 1945. Number three, TARDIS. Number four, heart. Number five, red and yellow. Number six, 48. Number seven, bear. Number eight, horse chestnut. Number nine, fruit. And number 10, kid. Okay, round number two answers to the music questions. Number one, George Ezra. Number two, The Beatles. Number three, Senorita. Number four, Let It Go. Number five, One Direction. Number six, Believers. Number seven, Taylor Swift. Number eight, 18. Number nine, monkey. And number 10, happy birthday. Okay, question, uh, answers to round number three, the potluck round. Number one, Ben Nevis. Number two, Wellington. Number three, Sleeping Beauty. Number four, Australia. Number five, Georgie Porgy. Number six, Hedgehog. Number seven, Sherwood. Number eight, Finland. Number nine, six. And number 10, Asia.